Welcome everyone to another Apple event video. As I've done so in the previous months and years, I wanted to shortly quickly comment the yesterday's Apple event a little bit. And a uh, hurricane theme to probably no, nobody's surprise here. I found this event extremely boring, disappointing and lacking innovation. And not that I'm usually people telling me hater and jellies and stuff. No, I couldn't be more happy with like a nothing phone and, and stuff. It's just that commenting that what happens in the tech industry, putting things into perspective and uh, also, yeah, certainly Apple, whether it's Steve Jobs or other factors working at home or I don't know what, lost, lost its innovation. Maybe also they focus too much on other unsuccessful projects like Apple Car and Apple Artificial Reality that they don't have more resources for that. So I watched the event um, first here in the office and the first half or the first 30% I found incredibly boring. So basically as a 30 minutes watch and me and my generation, I had an old fashioned watch. We were super happy when we had a phone, like a Nokia phone and stuff. And we didn't have a watch anymore, right? You took out your Nokia phone and you had the time. and. I already get too many notifications, I said this before, I I would even say and go as far to say people don't need more notification devices, right? They are a total productivity killer. We discussed this the other day in the Discord. Um, in my opinion, the last thing I need is more notifications and like I have a phone and that is enough for notifications. And I also have to say, I find this style of presentation extremely boring. I mean, if you would think my YouTube videos here are low quality, I mean, certainly they are nicely beautiful rendered, but I would say Steve Jobs' presentation certainly were one of a kind and this new style, I understand Steve Jobs is gone, but I would even say when this style of 3D rendered, probably when COVID started, initially it was actually something new and interesting, but Apple has, in my opinion, a bit of a problem of not innovating and just repeating the old, same old stuff in lack of more ideas or stuff. So they, in my opinion, just keep executing the same idea here, the same presentation style, certainly maybe perfecting it. Although I would even say the presentation style didn't even change much. And it's also for me super boring. It's a lot of lack of personality, of, of personal getting to know and in touch here as much as you can over video and, and in person there because it's mostly advertisement videos, right? And between all those 3D rendered and pre-recorded videos, sure, they can very high quality produce it, but this makes it extremely boring to me to sit here. It's basically a one hour 30 advertisement with many small advertisements in between. And especially at least with Steve Jobs earlier, you had at least like, hey, this is your new iPhone with all its jokes and stuff in between but here it's even with advertisement videos in between right sure steve job stuff was advertisement but here it's like let's go to iphone let's watch those advertisements let's talk a little bit let's watch another advertisements right and oh by the way here's another advertisement that is to me extremely boring to watch and given that not that much changed you could certainly say they spend as i initially mentioned they spend too much resources on other unsuccessful projects like Apple Car, but also supply chain issues. But whatever it is, or in general, lack of leadership, too much playing golf and jet, jetting around the world or stuff and instead of managing whatever their leadership, lack of inspiration and, and vision is. Because so, of course, there is a new watch. For the normal watch, not much changed. They have a new watch, what was the name, Ultra, the recurring Apple names. Uh, maybe we actually, because this video, uh, we probably go over here uh, to uh, that probably. There's a new watch, it, it still looks the same, which is in general the other problem. They try to, Apple tries to get here into the new American um, Supreme Court and uh, abortion right and um, issue here and try to monetize on selling the app now with the temperature sensor to to women for their cycle tracking and stuff all and charming a little bit of 
It super protected us, it does trust us, it's end-to-end -end encrypted, yes, we swear, whatever you might take off this. I would also say, sure, I'm not a woman, I mean, in general, this feature is interesting um, to women, certainly. I wonder if it's the most reliable with temperature sensor on the arm. And also, I would guess you need to wear it all night, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm already personally not Sure, I have old-fashioned analog watches and wear them sometimes, like when I travel, like once a month or so. I'm not sure if I would want to sleep with a watch each, each night for these features. But if you um, want to chime in there, leave in the comments below. So one stuff that is new, and yeah, it can all detect. I mean, they have a lot of gimmicks of car crash detection and stuff, but more to that in a second. Um, a little bit more better life and low power or whatever. They have this new Ultra, um, like what, whichever. And that's also the problem. The structure is also incredibly boring to me. I would want to see the new iPhone where also not much has changed, but probably because so little has changed in important features. They have to show the boring watch first, just so people don't tune out because they want to stay for the iPhone, right? So the ones, is also watch SE, yeah, whatever, a little bit different. So the major new thing is this Ultra Watch, which is of course freaking expensive, uh, mostly for travelers. And the crazy thing is also, as famous people as Casey Neistat said just the other day on Twitter, does it now cope better with, I think, Phantom touches, all this stuff? I never had an Apple Watch, but like, other people who are active say, like, yeah, it, the Apple Watch so far was not even the most usable so much to those people with this tracking, um, this Phantom touches and getting dirty and, and whatnot. So that is for adventures. It's super freaking expensive, right? Um, it has more precise GPS uh, for in the forest and cities, uh, battery life and diving and so on, 60 hour battery life. In theory, it is a nice thing. Also, I would, and those people like Casey Neistat and other real adventurers and so on, they all have some Garmin or whatnot because Apple was just not good there. And it's, of course, twice double niche because not only is it freaking expensive at $7.99, um, it is not only bulky and stuff, but this is features, of course, for real adventurers, think bush, bushcraft. And, and, and real travelers. And so this is feature set and, and bulkiness and stuff. Sure, you could have it as like a fashion accessory of like, hey, I, I'm rich, the I'm rich watch. But yeah, they now have satellite communication. I'll leave in the comments below. It's, it's, it's just hilarious. So basically Apple is like everyone who wants an iPhone and we can sell an iPhone now has an iPhone. So we need to sell everyone a watch, which in my opinion, pro tip, don't get it. I tried a little bit. I have the Moto 360 on sale and stuff. It's like, yes, you could argue Moto 360 sucks, sucked and stuff, but I wanted to try it on cheap and it's like, I don't need it. It's waste of money and, and brain multitasking notification awareness. They have satellite um, SOS notification now, which is kind of cool. However, I wonder if it's the most reliable and I would need to check which of those uh, precisely have this. Where is it freaking even when you tr try to find it? Um, due to the nature of not being a bulky phone, it um, only works with a clear sky and stuff. And I, I would really call this in question. Um, not only, they even say you need to hold it and the UI, is innovative UI, tells you how to position it in the left and right and hold it there and it might take a minute. I mean, sure, if you are about to die, then any notification is better than none, but then you stand there, it's like, so maybe in a minute and stuff. But yeah, okay, I get it. If you otherwise die, that is a minor inconvenience. However, it is in the beginning even only available in the US and Canada. It's like... You. Okay, so if you are an adventurer and a traveler and stuff, and then only in the US and Canada, it's like, yeah, maybe. They didn't even mention which server they use. Some new site says here, uh, global 
um, global some global star allegedly i don't know but it sounds a little bit unreliable to me and limited so your mind should may vary um you can apparently also text slowly and um, like text slowly like a method and sure they have some other UI improvements of like dedicated emergency dialogue stuff which that it's even worth mentioning of an extremely simple dialogue thing of car accident and me or in other words but this might even be useful for other adventurers like if you watch some youtubers like Eva Zubek and other like really traveling the world especially as woman alone and stuff and then with an unreliable vintage what was it jeep or so that actually could be a good service except it only works in US and Canada like notifi notifying like you close people or parents and stuff where you even overnight outdoors in the tent right but again it rises and falls with reliability which not only did it look reliable in the presentation which is also first for apple it's only us canada anyway um and this were the first 30 minutes right summarizing the first 30 minutes with not much to see only watch which i don't have and wouldn't recommend others for use um except maybe some auto features but if you total watch love or leave them in the comments below um then the airports which um a little bit newer and they have no my criticism right sure everything's a little bit newer but basically the same as before except tiny little of a little bit satellite us canada and so on the airports are the same um i actually i <laughs> truth be told i i think i only tried the airport once because i i'm signing out of the apple ecosystem because it's just too limited i want more open stuff and less expensive and more to that in a minute as well so i got a couple of um i'm not the greatest bluetooth fan because uh, reliability and stuff but i also got the nothing i still need to make a review video i'm so busy with my linux distribution didn't even make a proper review video i got the nothing year one they actually i would call them um pretty good for 99 although i think in the meantime maybe 89 they're quite, quite okay and i would say this for 89 or 99 or miss disco on 89 or something they are pretty good for that i have more expensive actually which <laughs> i wanted to make a video don't get it, it i the sennheiser the sennheiser truly suck right the problem with the sennheiser they were they were initially 299 i got them with discount as i usually do for maybe 199 they are the momentum true wireless gen 1 they totally suck they sound amazing or at least they sound good but the battery discharges within some days i even called sennheiser when they were new. i don't know if they fixed it but sennheiser is sold it's not no longer the german audio feel health anymore but anyway i've maybe they fixed this in gen 2 or 3 but after this expensive stuff um the nothing year one are a third of the money and, and don't have any discharge issues and i probably should make a video long story short i don't see like really everything anything that this apple stuff would be better at i tried them once apple um airport gen one or two or so uh, at a friend but one thing i really want to criticize i still need to test this maybe i order them just for test the stuff because i the one thing i would want to check is the microphone which is not the neither amazing at the sennheiser which ironically they advertise amazing microphone but it totally sucks and the nothing ear one the microphone might be a little bit better but the big problem is and i from what i heard so far apple has also not solved which really surprises me is that the shared bluetooth bandwidth or bluetooth profiles have extreme lackluster and low bandwidth microphone so it always sounds like garbage and you hear this also with a lot of newscasts nowadays you watch cnn or german first channel stuff in or bbc and they have people with wireless airpods they often sound like garbage right basically in, in 1980s landline telephone call has better audio quality and i need to review that I wonder why nobody else speaks about this or if if apple has some proprietary higher bandwidth microphone um protocol but they have oh sure they have this 
spot, uh, special, special audio stuff, which it's like I want prist pristine stereo sound, all this artificial, I don't know, apparently two times better noise cancellation um, than nothing you want to find. Um, also, I always wondered, does it mean previously they sucked and now they are twice, but yeah, whatever. Nothing really, sure, a little bit better, a little bit better noise cancellation, but th this is also the boring thing, right? Each year Apple comes there and shows the same thing. Hey, it's now a little bit better. Buy it again. It's like, do. Um, sure, that is if you are a mega corporation and that is the only thing you can do because you have nothing else innovative to show then that's probably it. Except making pro things, pro SKUs that are even more expensive because of money. Coming to the iPhone, um, and that is the crazy stuff, right? It still looks the same except the only thing is in the pro notch they changed this now to some dynamic island which the same is totally hilarious. From what I've seen on the internet a lot of people applaud this as finally something new which I said previously the notch is stupid and um, I so um, prefer the hole punch which I also previously had at uh, the Samsung S10e, you know that. Um, I think for me as a right-handed the nothing uh, hole punch is better for me because of the centering, the left aligned hole punch camera is for me with the right handed uh, but I think the S10e was uh, on the other side that was always you had to like hold it further there to have somewhat centered video call. Um, I would actually still call, this is the crazy stuff right, they make such a fuss about this stuff, so ba basically not much has changed right, it's a little bit better contrast ratio and outdoor brightness which is amazing, actually the one thing but the, the nothing phone is it's a fraction, it's like less than half of the price, right? So one thing that might not be super outstanding is actually the brightness outdoors in, in globally climate challenged um, sunshine. Um, brightness could be better, but hey, it costed a fraction of the money. And so the, the biggest innovation, so basically the new non-pro is the, uh, the previous pro tech processor kind of stuff and camera in the aluminum uh, housing. Um, so basically recycling last, last year's stuff. The Pro has the now smaller notch, um, brighter display, Apple custom OLED because of course they, have so, they don't have their own manufacturing and only source the stuff as other companies anyway. And so this um, Dynamic Island, which the name, the name, uh, the name is hilarious. So yes, this little bit better camera, like 48 megapixels, which the nothing phone has also 50 megapixels and a Sony sensor. Maybe the Apple sensor is still better than, or you would hope that for that price, the Apple sensor, and certainly the optics are better than a 500 dollar euro nothing phone. <laughs> Whatever, it's it's freaking at 500 bucks freaking amazing photos. Sure the low light performance could be better but stuff but this is also the thing there's a limit of even I as the YouTuber and CTO CEO here of my company sure I could afford this iPhone but as many other Mac and iPhone developers say even for them the pricing gets out of affordable range right which is crazy um, to say. So this notch um, somewhere there, there's no this dynamic island, wherever it is, there's also emergency SOS and stuff, so here dynamic notch. And I would still call, so their sensor array is no smaller, not, I always hated the notch, sure, sure now it's smaller, I would still, the whole punch is still smaller, but whatever. And so they made, to, to hide that more and made it innovative, they created this dynamic island here, which is just in UI of true black there of 100,000 to zero or something OLED contrast ratio and so basically play fully playing with UI elements of navigation and notifications and stuff hiding the now smaller notch pill there in UI which is like yeah I, I still would take a whole punch of wasting that much screen real estate naming I would actually suggest a better name why not 
call it dynamic notch or do people i mean does dynamic notch not make more sense than dynamic island i, I think at least as far as i remember it was dynamic island was it even uh, i hope it was the apple naming is so stupid how should i remember this stuff um Maybe they intentionally have not chosen the straightforward name of dynamic notch because people hated the freaking notch so much. But yeah, what this does now is dynamically rendering the animations of stuff transitioning into it and navigation stuff resizing in and out of it. It is a clever way of hiding this freaking notch more. Um, but again, a whole punch would have been fine. Um, also, I wouldn't add oh, Dynamic Island. There it is. Yeah, also, I mean, you, they, are, they are hiding this notch island there. Why the name needs to be so stupid, I don't, I don't know. Um, this also obviously means this stuff needs to be black to hide that. And because obviously there is a notch there. Nah. Um, I would call it an interesting idea for a problem they created themselves. I would not, I mean, who cares how the notifications are shown there. But there you have it. Oh, one thing, they made this thing a little bit bigger. And th I think the, the biggest thing I, I always said a couple of times, I'm, I'm not a big phone person. I think the nothing phone one is the biggest phone I ever had. Um, I think that is. And I would say the nothing phone one is actually kinder too big for me um, for I underestimated that a little bit um, it it slips out of my jeans even you sit somewhere on, on a park bank with your child or stuff and the nothing phone also similar to the iPhone gorilla glass bag I never had the issue of phone slipping out of my jeans but the nothing phone does and probably so does the iPhone and it really is, I would totally not get the bigger phone. I guess the Pro Max is 6.7. Is that the size? I uh, lost overview. But basically, the Nothing Phone 1 is kind of sort of, also I have larger hands than former failing orange president, apparently. I can hold it, but... Mm, I don't know. It is it is really at the border, and I thought I love it more for more screen real estate for reading technical specs and stuff, PDFs. But I don't know. I find it sure you can have big and bigger, but I don't know. Apparently, people want bigger phones. Leave me in the console. Oh, oh, and last but not least. Years later, years, years after the competition, they now have an always on display. And the crazy thing is, even other much more famous YouTubers like Marketh Brown there from MK uh, BHD, Marketh Brown is HD, MK BHD. Also, I think he even, he, uh, even he said something like years or something like years after the competition, right? Better late than never years after the competition. And that if already Apple fan YouTubers say something like that, then you know they are late. Um, oh, and one last thing, one, one other last thing. They totally lack on silicon development, right? They surely lost their, I think it was their silicon lead developer there who founded a startup of, I think, Nuvia, which Qualcomm now purchased and Arm is suing them for that. And their CPU GPU performance is totally stagnating, right? So much so that they need to compare the performance here because if they would have shown last year, they would have like, if they would have compared this to an A15, they would have barely like only a few percent, right? So even to show their own CPU performance, they need to pull out a 3, 21, 20, 19, 3 year old, their own silicon to have a significant performance improvement, right? And you see this shoe, they have a little bit, they of course are locked to what TSMC can deliver and they can also not really put more 
logic elements in there. Um, sure, their, their design was outstanding. Um, they, as I said before, they had 15 years, of course, since purchasing um, PA Zemi, who previously had the power efficient power PC cores. So it truly took them 10 years to get that out and 15 years to get that performance in 2004 or 2006 ish there. Um, but now they lost their innovation there is too, uh, too. They have, sure, they still have the best in class design here, but they don't really make much progress. It could be, of course, that they work internally on a big new revamp. Of course, I don't know that. It could be like in two, three, four, five years they have the next super amazing design. But the fact is they barely make progress there. Um, sure, they are still better than the nearest competitor, allegedly, maybe, to whatever they compare there, maybe the distance of fine print. I think they added like one more GPU core or so, um, wherever they, they had that. But yeah, limited in also process node, they went from TSMC 5 to 4. and. So that is only a tiny little bit smaller. So they could only get one more GPU in there or something. At least that is my summary of, of correct me if I'm wrong. So yeah, watch wise, iPhone wise, not much really to see there. And silicon stagnating there for whatever reasons, maybe they can't get more into the process. They are busy with the next big thing. All the design team is working on the Mac versions of that. I don't know, but it's not much better. And last but not least, the price is crazy, right? Um, although I think the US prices might not have changed much, if at all, but the rest of the world prices totally skyrocketed, right? In the Eurozone, as much as 100 euros, making the previously, I said this always previously, it is freaking expensive in Europe. Um, and that was this VAT. I had this previously on my blog years ago. Um, probably so much as a decade ago. Where is the date? Somewhere. 2000. Uh, where's the publication date? Wherever the publication date is. But this was factoring in exchange rate and VAT. And even then it was 150 euro more expensive or over 100 um, over 150 euro and sure I get that the exchange rate significantly changed since then but and this the argument always was Apple wanted wants to be on the safe safe side with the exchange rate but they increased it even further so they cash in significantly more in other markets, um, even with exchange rate applied. And um, that makes the phone freaking expensive here, right? In times of global, reoccurring global crisis, we are still two years in this pandemic, a new war here in the middle of Europe, and still COVID and China's zero COVID strategy wrecking havoc, havoc not only in China, but due to a lot of manufacturing there in the worldwide supply chain. And in all of this, Apple cannot be at least that user-friendly to keep the prices, which are were still high and still 150 euro over previous exchange rate prices. And currently, I mean, you see as crazy, right? Currently the euro is on par to the dollar. So you could theoretically, although plus VAT, okay, but anyway, that makes the iPhone the certainly still most expensive phones in Europe, which certainly doesn't make it the easiest buying decision, especially given that not as much change, right? A little bit, little bit better process, a little bit better camera, but does it really cut it? Sure, I get they have thousands of engineers busy with their artificial reality stuff, um, which may or may not be successful. I personally, as much as it, amazing as it always sounds, I personally don't want to sit all day in artificial reality stuff. 
I also don't want to get notifications all day long because I have stuff to do. So, yeah, that's it. A little bit better everywhere, <laughs> kind of sort of. I didn't even have to make a event about that, <laughs> especially a 90 minute event of not much new. Anyway, I would, if you if you are in an iPhone, Apple, Wallet, Garden Land, I would recommend get the previous generation phone on, on discount, which at that price is certainly is always a good tip for everyone. I hope this summary was somehow helpful. Um, otherwise, if you heard the first time bought alternative, nearly as good phones for half the price, like nothing one. Um, I probably should make a dedicated video about that. And um, and this stuff is good enough for me, right? And that a recurring theme of mine, phones should not be that expensive because for 900 you do, uh, euro, for that prices, you get a freaking Huel MacBook. Not to mention for half the price, you get an entry-level Lenovo ThinkPad E-series, whatever, on discount stuff, which I find crazy that a phone and from the first iPhone, the first iPhone was 399 probably. Um, and we have come sure the new iPhone is better than <laughs> 10 generation previous original first gen iPhone. But on release, the, I, the first generation iPhone was also state of the art, kind of sort of for the most part, except maybe edge networking. But this crisis are, these prices are hilarious. Um, they are too high, they are ridiculous. Um, but leave in the comments below. I would in general, I would actually predict the, the crisis will continue. We will have to live with COVID for quite some years to come with some precautions, reasonable precautions. I catch it myself as even in a mild form for me, it wasn't the most fun and I don't want to get it again. And this is war. I hope it's over soon. This barbaric attack of Russia on Ukraine and COVID and other problems in China. The next years plus global climate crisis and change. People should do better things with their, with their money than overpaying for this ridiculously priced Apple products. Buy yourself a new uh, environmentally friendly heating or insulate your house and stuff. Everything more important than, than this. And um, that's basically it for this video. Now I probably got to go <laughs> work on my Linux distribution. Um, on the software front, stuff at Apple also doesn't look the most shiny, but that is a topic for a dedicated video. Let's quickly, today I only go briefly over the video because we have a 30 minute live stream and if it's too long, people don't watch it. So let's take a brief look at the comments um, and see if anything uh, stands out here. Um, people also don't see a reason to, to buy an iPhone. Uh, Huawei has 22 mode for mic recording on their free buds pro. Sadly only though. That, that's interesting. I wonder, I, I mean, that is the only reason I might get, I mean, um, uh, truth be told, I got um, two and nothing year one because, and that is the thing, I'm not even paid for that, right? I, at, at 99 or 89, they are really extremely good, except the microphone, which is good enough. And I probably made a mistake. Um, I got them twice because first I got the white one when they were out and I like them so much. The crazy thing is I'm, I'm so much not an influencer. I like them so much. I didn't even make a video, YouTube video about this. <laughs> Busy with my Linux distribution, which by the way, are we compiling? Ah, oh, darn, Cargo doesn't compile. Ah, oh, shit. Um, and I probably made the strategic mistake of buying it twice. Um, I gave the white version then to my, my girl, uh, which ironically <laughs> doesn't use them the most because somehow she likes um, wired ones more. It probably would have been smarter for me to get the AirPods to test, um, to compare the microphone quality. Maybe, maybe I should finally do that. Um, so what else do we have there? Um, 
And last but not least, for those people who tune in before I read the comments, I would really appreciate if the tech industries get their act together and create more open and interoperable solutions like find my stuff, right? That I understand why Apple is not doing that, right? They want this vendor login, but it is really ridiculous that even if I have some Mac products, I can't use this find my shit all over the place. Um, and like continuity, I can't like, if I still need to sometimes write Mac software, I can't use continuity between an Android email app and, and, and Apple Mail or so. Um, and that really killed IT for me. Previously, I said this before decades ago, Apple fanboys were complaining that Microsoft stuff was not interoperable with their Mac stuff. And now Apple is doing the same thing, right? They are not big mega corporations. They are not your friends, recurring theme here. And they only want to earn more money and not making the world a better place, unfortunately. Uh, Marco still has their Apple Watch Series 1. Unfortunately, the battery needs replacement every um, 12 to 18 months, which sucks. Yeah, that certainly sucks. And oh, by the way, good that you mentioned that. Thanks for that. I wanted to say even, um, who was it? Um, someone pointed out, where did I see that? That maybe even high profile influencer on, on Twitter that with this watch, and Apple wants to become greener and so green and stuff. They have their recycled aluminum and stuff, but the one thing they don't have is like changeable battery, right? Someone rightfully like you pointed out here on this watch thing. Um, it's all nice and stuff, but the one thing missing here is green and stuff, right? But where is the user <laughs> or at all serviceable battery, right? It's like or gluing all the stuff and so on. So. Um, so, TechView writes, funny, uh, Apple removes the notch and Huawei a day before reintroduced the notch and then you flagship, yeah. Hole punch is, um, the, the notch really is too much. I, um, the hole, the hole is so, so little of not noticeable that I have to say, I barely ever notice the hole. I mean, sure, it's in the state. I mean, it's a, it's a freaking hole. It's really freaking enough. I mean, and then the problem is solved. And I'm actually, I don't need an under display. And then there, I understand many Android alternatives have an under screen sensor, which of course degrades image quality as much as a technological marvel that is. I take a much simpler, much higher quality front facing hole punch camera every, any day over technological marvel, but less image quality under display vendors. So, um, Samurites like how they had people like hole punch and decided a dynamic island is equivalent. Uh, nightmare for usability as you need a second hand to answer call before was more accessible than phone. For the verse, um, love of spending a thousand dollars every two years for a new phone. Yeah, and I have to say, if it wouldn't be, um, even I brought too many phones, and I, and only because I want to eventually make my YouTube channel even more a little bit more professional, and wanted to. I actually wanted to make a review video. Just I'm I'm just almost honestly out of time, right? So, nah probably need to rethink this. But even for me, buying every two years a phone is too much. And the other, I, although I it, I think it was over two years, it was at least two and a half years since uh, Samsung S10e. And, um, and even that I still use. As a backup phone, it's still usable. And, um, and that is the thing, right? Which probably I will never really be a good influencer because my time of fixing rust and cargo is more valuable than um, creating funny phone review videos and unless companies send them to me f to, to review but even then 
probably my time of spending on open source and the microkernel is probably more valuable than reviewing phones. Maybe I should totally not even trying that except maybe exceptions like the nothing phone one. Because truth be told all the freaking phones are mostly still the same and not only could I still kinder use the first gen iPhone if it wouldn't had like bloody edge. Um, I could even still use like an old iPhone if it wouldn't be so freaking slow with the last iOS version and then have security vulnerabilities of not having an iOS update. Which the new mail also became totally usable on like the iPhone S6, S6S, um, which is also crazy. Sure, Apple ships our software update, updates for six years, except not anymore. And then the last software update is so slow that you can't even read and like, sure, you can if you wait really long, but waiting 10 seconds for freaking text email to load. Anyway, that's it for this video. Um, I hope you learned something. I probably shouldn't answer question, question Q and A so long. Um, as usual, don't forget to check subscribe. I hope this helped someone. And as much as the big mega corporations don't want to hear that, just use your old stuff like your SG, uh, SG Obtain or B3 as long as it works for you. And have a good day or night and hope to see you next time for all the next tech and microkernel software fun to come.